guys! Thanks for coming back for another Pixie Talks review vlog. Pixie Talks, Pixie Talks, reviews and vlogs at Pixie Talks. Before we dive into the review, there are some short announcements to make. I have recently set up a little Redbubble t-shirt store and it features some pretty neat little things including a channel fan shirt and a My Little Pony Avengers crossover shirt. So if you think anything like that is cool, you could maybe have a look. I've also started doing a podcast with my husband Travis and I'll have a link to where you can find that nonsense. If you follow me on Facebook, you will see updates on all of these things. I do a lot of other stuff aside from videos, so if you want updates on all my other projects, Facebook is the place to be. And with that out of the way, it's been way too long since I reviewed Doctor Who. moving into the month of October, and as you may recall, October is Horror Month. So why Doctor Who? Well, while Doctor Who may be sci-fi, the classic stuff at least tends to also border a little bit on weird fiction. I love weird fiction. Atmospherically, Doctor Who tends to be rather spooky and foreboding. And so, I thought I would take this opportunity to jump back into The Good Doctor and talk a little bit about Patrick Troughton. To be perfectly honest, part of the reason that it took me so very long to get back into Doctor Who was that at first Patrick Troughton really bored me. Partly because he's so very different from the first Doctor, but also partly because I started with The Tomb of the Cybermen, which was not at all the most engaging episode. But Troughton grew on me the more I watched him. His personality at first seemed a little less fleshed out than his predecessor, but I gradually got more and more of it. He's not so grumpy, but certainly more animated. He's boisterous and shouts a lot, and often comes across like a bumbling fool, but is actually incredibly good at cunning and deception. That he's brilliantly smart is quite clear, but he doesn't let on much. It's a wholly different kind of character. And I really, really loved some of the stories that I watched of his. As I mentioned, Tomb of the Cybermen may have bored me to tears, but there are other, far more enjoyable pieces of writing here. I utterly adored the Mind Robber, as well as the Underwater Menace. There's just some brilliantly creepy yet exciting stories here. Mind Robber in particular opened with such a buildup of fear and foreboding that it's hard not to get sucked right in and glued to the edge of your seat. And of course, we have to talk about the companions. My favorite companions here were Zoe and Jamie. Zoe was a surprisingly awesome leading female character for the time. She was an astrophysicist from the future and she was just as smart as the doctor, as well as being totally competent in a fight. Even if the uh, choreography here isn't the greatest, okay, it's downright awful, it's still obvious that they envisioned her as a total badass. Jamie also had great amounts of personality and while he wasn't as smart, he was passionate and resourceful. The three of them ended up making a great team. Less awesome, I could not stand the earlier Victoria. She was like every old-fashioned feminine stereotype you could think of. She screamed a lot, fainted, couldn't do anything for herself, and just in general got the group in lots of bad situations just by being dumb as a rock. Which is part of what made Zoe such a great reprieve to move on to her episodes after Victoria. Nothing much changed between this Doctor and the last as far as effects went. We still have some really bad, really dated effects that would make it difficult for modern audiences to really engage with the stories. For myself, however, it's all part of the charm of watching old-timey sci-fi. I love the stupid look of the Ice Warriors, for instance. How could you not? One ride getting into Patrick Troughton, and even though I didn't take to him as quickly as the first Doctor, by the time I was done, he felt like a jolly old friend. Of course, it's still time to move on, and hopefully it won't take me another year to get to John Pertwee. <laughs> and 
and thanks for watching my review of The Second Doctor. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can hear some of my further thoughts on Doctor Who, as well as a nice little honorable mention to all of you lovely people who pointed out my pronunciation error in the last Doctor Who video, on my podcast. Please be sure to subscribe for more, as well as follow me on Facebook for other such projects. And I'll see you next week for more spooktacular fun. Bye!